Hey, I am joined by a very special woman, Amber Pearson, owner of Better Together Planasium. Amber, welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. You're welcome. It's my pleasure. It's really my pleasure. Before our interview began, you said that you mixed yourself a little, a little drink because you were starting to feel the nerves. Absolutely. <laughs> Take the edge off. <laughs> for you. Amber, it's 6 p.m. somewhere, okay? Absolutely. I'm like, it's afternoon, so that's all that matters. <laughs> I mean, good for you. I mean, it's p.m., so in, in, in that regard, p.m. means free game. Absolutely. And Friday, even better. <laughs> I haven't drank in a while. I uh, Sometimes I miss it. Sometimes I don't. I, uh, I occasionally do a dab of CBD under my tongue. Um, yeah. Which is, have you ever tried CBD? Actually, yeah, we just started dabbling in it um, just because we've heard such great things with anxiety and that kind of stuff. Um, so both my husband and I have started trying. So, yeah, yep. I like yep. it. There's also some benefits, even um, therapeutic, therapeutic benefits for uh, patients that have a whole host of neurosis and physical ailments. And I wouldn't be surprised if CBD had some benefits for your son, Kai. We, it's funny that you mentioned that because we've actually started to do a little research on it. Um, his neurologist has mentioned it to us. So it's something that we've considered and started reading a little into to see if that would be something that could benefit him for sure. Yeah. So mm. I, I've got so many things to talk to you about. Um, you know, just starting with the fact that having a atypically developing child is um, something that is challenging. You said to me in the previous conversation, it's not any harder, it's just different. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting because on the outside, looking in, the conversation is, oh, I'm so thankful that I don't have as much of a challenge as parent, ex-parent. And what's really interesting is that's actually not your experience. Your experience is it's just different. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, obviously Kai is um, our first and only child right now. And as I've started to meet other moms and make friends of um, other women who have one or multiple children, it's funny because my husband and I will have conversations and say, yeah, we have our challenges with Kai. That's for sure. But he may not be walking right now at two, but then I see someone else's two-year-old like running around screaming and stripping their clothes off. And I'm like, hey, you know, I'm okay with it right now. <laughs> like, right. Yeah, uh, so the challenges are just different. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a good reminder. Um, you know, I, I have close friends, I have kids on the spectrum with various ailments and things. And what I've noticed is, is that it's a, it can be, with the right mindset, a gift. And what I yes. mean by that is those couples that are um, managing an atypically developing child mm -hmm. build partnerships that I consider like military brothers. Yeah. Like literally, mm -hmm. you create this partnership that is deep, so deep and beyond that of a, a maybe a, a, the word isn't ordinary, but... Um, Mm -hmm. other types of families because by no means is there anyone that's ordinary everyone's got their yeah. own challenges but you and your husband Danny that that must really have created quite a an amazing opportunity for partnership absolutely um obviously no relationship is easy <laughs> um but it so it's taken a while to get there, but there's a lot of like mutual respect that I think we've really grown in that would not have been the case if it weren't for Kai and the challenges that we've experienced with him. I mean, you know, when we're sitting up at 3 a.m. in the hospital, like having to hold down our child together while he's getting an IV put in screaming at the top of his lungs. Yeah, you gain a lot more respect for that other person because they are just like you said, trudging through the mud with you they're right there you know and it's um yeah it's been it's funny because they're the the statistics for parents of children with challenges and special needs um they're not always great as far as like the levels of the numbers of divorces and that kind of stuff 
Um, but I think that it can be a positive thing as well. Yeah. You know, if it's understandable that divorce rates would be higher um, mm -hmm. due to the amount of pressure. The most common reason for divorces is uh, finances. And yeah. I got to imagine that along with the necessary health care and therapy and so forth that Kai needs, that there's probably a lot of financial needs that are placed upon the parents. Um, mm -hmm. Does insurance, like how, how does that work with insurance? Do they cover a lot of therapies or not even close? Or? Uh, it's hit or miss. We are blessed that my husband works for Scott's miracle Grow, and their company's insurance plan is fan phenomenal. Awesome. Um, yeah. So we are, we really are blessed in that aspect. Um, I mean, we hit our max out of pocket every year in January. <laughs> so the rest of the year is, it's like, we just know that, you know, six grand up front, it's going to be for Kai. Um, there's obviously hoops to jump through for everything else, medical equipment, wheelchairs, braces, um, all, monitors, that kind of stuff. Um, you can get them through the insurance. You just have to put in a lot of work, which in turn ends up being my job because that's I spend majority of time with Kai. And the, also the help of my aunt who has worked in medical billing for years. So she's a saint. Oh, <laughs> that's helpful. Yeah, so don't get me wrong, the bills are expensive, but um, we definitely use our our insurance to its maximum capacity <laughs> for what we need. You are a terrible customer for insurance. <laughs> they do not want you. No, um, they, anybody's going to see Kai Pearson and they're going to run. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me tell you, that is that is a blessing. I, I, I got to imagine a family that doesn't have insurance and has the needs that a child of Kai's nature does, like, what do you do? I, I truly can't imagine. Um, I will say that Franklin County has some pretty fabulous resources um, and all of that's income-based. So there are some people in positions that can get a lot from the county and from the state, um, but that's a lot of just different resources. It doesn't necessarily cover hospital bills. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah, I can imagine it'd be a challenge. So just a little slice of life, because we talked about this prior and I, I, I found it to be very interesting, very moving about the perspective <laughs> of a child looking at an atypically functioning uh, person. Mm -hmm. I am uh, riding bicycles with Ethan, my five and a half year old. We pass a boy in our neighborhood who has some type of physical challenge. He yeah. uses a walker. He's always with an aide. And my son said, while he was looking intently, I would say staring, um, I said, Ethan, you know, it's not nice to stare. You don't know maybe he's in pain or what he's dealing with. Um, yeah. It just might make someone feel uncomfortable. And he said, well, I just don't understand why he's walking with sticks. And I said, well, you know, for a variety of reasons, he could have gotten an accident or maybe he was born and his brain didn't work a certain way or so forth and so on. And Yep. I could see the innocence of his uh, observation, mm -hmm. and it was um, it was very beautiful. It was very like um, there was no pretense. Yeah, and um, I th I would imagine being with Kai and other children mm -hmm. that that comes up, and that must be a real beautiful thing to witness. Absolutely. Um, so I've had a friend, and this was not me personally, but has had story after story. She has a son who is in a wheelchair, on a ventilator, um, you know, kind of like the whole nines as far as um, support that he needs daily. And he, she's had adults come up to her and, and just say, you know, what's wrong with your kid? And to me, I'm just like, that is so bold. And it doesn't come from the innocent place uh, as a child. Um, and it's truly from the position of just curiosity when it's with a kid. Um, I know you and I talked previously before this about our play gym and that's what I love so much about it is um, we called it Better Together Play Nasium because we wanted it to be kids atypical and typical functioning playing together to intentionally create those conversations um, because otherwise kids 
they just don't know. I mean, you know, their life experiences are only, you know, five or six years or so of life experiences. So unless we have the opportunity to explain that to them, um, they just truly genuinely don't know. And then once you do, it's, it's just so, like you said, it's beautiful to watch that light bulb almost just be like, oh, that's why. Okay. And then it's just like no big deal to them. Um, my son is visually impaired and legally blind. And I've had multiple kids um, in our play gym and even out at parks and public or even at something as simple as we go to music therapy sometimes through children's. And um, other kids are there who are of seeing and the, you know, they don't understand like why his eyes are closed majority of the time. You know, we just explain that his eyeballs didn't really grow like they were supposed to, but even though he can't see, he can hear you, he can feel your touch. And now, you know, that's just how they greet Kai. They make sure to talk to him and maybe pat his shoulder or something like that. And in, and then they don't think anything, nothing else about it. And it's just like, it's really awesome to watch. Yeah. Well, you know, kids, kids are really amazing in that way. Um, they don't have as much past as we do. Yeah. And the past is what creates that pretense, that anxiety, mm -hmm. that internal dialogue of, I don't want to say something wrong. I don't want to do something wrong. I don't want to embarrass anyone. Um, yeah. I, I know this intimately because my best friend growing up, uh, star football player, best looking guy, mm -hmm. uh, got the girls. Um, he was in a car accident. He took a full vehicle and squished it into an accordion about four feet. Um, and he severed his spine. He's, uh, you know, in a wheelchair. And mm -hmm. the initial part of that, I was uncomfortable. I was mm -hmm. uncomfortable. Yeah. And I didn't know how to uh, be vulnerable with him and to talk mm -hmm. openly about it and to just like be casual, be relaxed. Yeah. Um, and I, I got to imagine that there's just a reflex of adults to mm -hmm. feel that way. For sure. And I, I think back and I, t I've told this story to some friends and I, to my husband. So I was a teacher before I stayed home with Kai and opened our planasium. And I distinctly remember when I was in college at Capital University and I was an education major and I had to like finally pick like what was my specialization going to be? Was I going to go into early ed? Was I going to and I've been I'm an artist as well. So I've always been the creative type. So I was like, well, am I going to do art? But the jobs are limited. You know, all of the things I was weighing. But the one thing I always said was I'm not going to go into special education. I'm not cut from that cloth. It makes me feel uncomfortable. I wouldn't know what to say. I wouldn't know how to act. And I wanted to make sure I was appropriate about it. So I just kind of literally didn't even consider it. It was just not an option. And then I, I joke that it's like God's ultimate slap in the face. Like, remember back in 2006 when you said you weren't gonna do that? Well, here's your perfectly made baby for you. And I'm gonna prove that you can and you will do that. Yeah, and um, you have been. And you not only have you been, but you've used um, Kai to create community, mm -hmm. to create learning and growth opportunities. And um, is your um, business a 501c3 nonprofit or is it a for profit? It's a for profit. Okay, got it. Mm -hmm. um, so just going backwards again, you were an art teacher for elementary and high school kids. Uh, some of the curriculum in which you included ceramics. Mm -hmm. And I understand that that was in Cincinnati. I did teach in Cincinnati. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, being a teacher comes with the, the requirement of patience. So mm -hmm. <laughs> um, well, at that time, you may not have felt you were well suited and having the capabilities. Patience, mm -hmm. I got to imagine, is a big part of how you have to be with an atypically developing child. Absolutely. Yeah. And I. Uh, yeah, when I was a high school teacher, definitely had to practice a lot of patience. <laughs> yeah. You know, I am having a challenge just today. I'm around mm. my kids so much. I'm trying to do work. I'm a realtor. My wife is furloughed. I'm trying to pitch in. And my son is hanging off me nonstop. And what's yeah. there for me is, is I need space. Yeah. I need the space and I need a moment to catch my breath. Yep. And, um... And what's really there for me is I'm not being patient. Mm -hmm. 
I'm not being patient with him and I'm not being patient with myself. I yeah. think that when you have the demands on your brain, your body or so forth, mm -hmm. it's vital that you be patient with yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. So how do you do that? How do you, how do you go about like give nurturing yourself, being patient with yourself, being compassionate? What does that look like? Well, I feel like one, it's a huge mental game. Um, it took me a long time to like get in a position of, you know, instead of getting just immediately frustrated, like middle of the night, Sky would have seizure episodes and things like that. And you're just like, I can't fix this. There's nothing I can do. Um, when you're just, you, when you're overwhelmed by you, the laundry list of things on your plate, one, I think obviously everybody talks about self-care now, and I think that is important that you're making sure you are finding that time for yourself. But if you're in that exact moment and you're feeling that frustration, like I just feel like it's just the mental game of like offer yourself some grace. Like, okay, I'm allowed to be upset by this right now, but I need to take a deep breath and realize that even though I need some space to myself, let me give my kid a hug and then I'll get that in 10 minutes or whatever it might be. So mm -hmm. I'm the hardest, ask anybody, I am so hard on myself that I really struggle with this. So I'm working to practice what I preach. <laughs> so if you ever have any other tactics, I'm more than willing to take them because right. I, um, I tend to struggle with the same thing. Yeah, I don't think you're alone. And speaking with a close friend of mine, Heather, um, who I spent time with on, on an interview a couple weeks ago, she's also pretty hard, hard on herself. My mm -hmm. sense is that um, in order to manage the demands on your lifestyle, your child's needs, juggling life, you have to build some callousness. Yeah. And that callousness, the impact of it can be you forget about the care of yourself. And Absolutely. You, you forget to not be a hard ass on yourself because a lot of the time you kind of have to be with what mm -hmm. you're dealing with. So yeah. it's natural. Mm -hmm. that you would be experiencing that. Um, yeah. I what The way you came across to me and speaking the several times we have is super positive, great, great energy, um, mm -hmm. great heart, innovative, creative, inspiring. Um, oh, what, thank you. That's very flattering. <laughs> I'm a great liar, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> you can just keep it going. <laughs> Um, what, what is your like friends and community? What are they, they know you closest. They know you mm -hmm. very well. What's their take on you and your life? You know, what do they, if I asked your closest friends, yeah, remember what she like, what's her deal? What are they going to say? Well, I guess I'm pretty impressed then. Cause just the few times we've talked, I feel like you hit the head on the nail because very similar. I mean, everybody always tells me like, oh, Amber is just like, so the typical blonde, she's like energetic and loud and talks a lot. And that's all very true. <laughs> um, but also definitely passionate. And I, I totally wear my heart on my sleeve. Um, if I'm going to do something, I put my mind to it and it's going to get done, but it's got to be something that I'm passionate about. If I'm not, that's, it's totally going to fall by the wayside. So it's, I, it's taken me a while to rein that in, but um, I think that a lot of the words that you already said were would be probably similar to what people would describe me as. <laughs> so your enthusiasm is um, really a good fit for cheerleading, which I understand you were a cheerleading coach for mm -hmm. quite a while with your family's, uh, your parents' business, Cheer Force. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So. Um, I kind of got them all sucked into cheer world and then now I'm not really in it anymore. So I'm like, Oh, sorry, mom. But, um, they, I cheered for years through high school and then coached through college and beyond became a part of cheer force one after college. And then my mom ended up buying into the program and my dad bought a new building for them and it became a family business. So, um, a lot of my family and friends are very similar to me because you know, they're, they're cheer world people <laughs> and uh, it's, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Um, but the reason I kind of stopped the cheer world was just after I had Kai, obviously passions and needs for things shifted. That's understandable. Mm -hmm. uh, as you were just talking, my dog came over to me. Yeah. And checked in with me to see how I was doing. 
um, having an animal around is such a relief for anxiety and well-being. I understand that in 2022, um, the folks over at um, Serve an Animal for Paws? Four Paws, yeah. Four Paws will be um, partnering with you for Kai's first service animal. Yes, I am so pumped. I'm an animal lover for sure. I begged for a dog for years through like middle school and high school. My parents always said no. And then when I was in college, I'm like, I'll show them. So I got my own dog. Um, I had her for 13 years. We just had to put her down last year. And then we have a, um, a German Shepherd pit mix right now who is like Kai's little sidekick. Um, but we had talked about wanting to get Kai a service dog. Um, obviously, the first conversation was when we were told he was legally blind. We're like, oh, I wonder about a seeing eye dog mm -hmm. in the future. But after doing a lot of research, I realized, you know, the child has to be old enough. Like they say, usually 12 or older, cognitively able to like command the dog. And we don't really know what Kai's future looks like um, with brain anomalies and epilepsy and uh, hydrocephalus. He obviously has significant developmental delays. So we didn't really know if he'd even ever get to that point. Um, so when we found Four Paws, it's this amazing program that they train the dog exactly to your child's specific medical and developmental needs. Um, so we are blessed with the um, most amazing like family and friends. I, we call them our tribe. Kai's Crusaders tribe is like the best of the best. They helped us raise $17,000 for this dog within a month. Wow. It was awesome. Hi, <laughs> yeah. Crusaders tribe. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. So, oh, um, yeah. You know, having been, as I mentioned in many previous programs, I'll say it again because I'm passionate about it animal assisted therapy. Mm -hmm. You know that I've done that in the past. Yeah, the benefits that Kai is going to experience and that you will see go far beyond mm -hmm. what you think is possible. Um, I'll give you, may I, can I share a little tale? Yes, please. I know this is about you, but you know, my own ego requires. <laughs> that share away. <laughs> so um, as an animal assisted therapist, a volunteer back in the day in New York, I used to visit a school and one of the students was an atypically developing student, second grade, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the curriculum was about eight weeks. The students got to learn how to take care of an animal. Mm -hmm. They got to learn how to do basic obedience commands. Um, they got to learn from me about what I'm looking for in body language. Yeah. Uh, they got to read with the animal. They got to lay down with the animal. Um, and one student in particular um, who had uh, the most acute atypical developing characteristics um, grew really close to my dog. And the teacher said that his behavior was so different with my dog Riley around. Mm -hmm. He socialized, he mm -hmm. could be in story time and not be irritated by various stimuli. Yeah, he didn't need his balls. Um, there's a balls pit that stimulation mm -hmm. creates um, a sense of calming and well-being, almost like a hug, as I'm sure you've heard before. Absolutely. He didn't need his ball pit, and um, it just made me so proud to see mm -hmm. what the impact was that my dog could do for someone, and yeah. uh, it was transformative. I left there feeling like on top of the world. Mm -hmm. Well, that is amazing. And truthfully, this brings me back to when we were talking about like the innocence of a child. I think that's what's so amazing about those animals is that they just love people unconditionally and there's an innocence about it. And I just think that's why they are able to create just such an awesome bond. I can imagine for that student too, that that was almost like a security blanket or, mm -hmm. you know, a binky for a little baby. It's just mm -hmm. like for whatever reason that created that sense of security for him and that's awesome. Yeah, so yeah. I, I digress on a tangent because you and I have so much in common. Let's yeah. get back to the core of our conversation. Yeah. Better Together Planasium. So yeah. you were a coach and cheerleading mm -hmm. uh, for your folks company, Cheerforce One. Mm -hmm. Now they own the building and mm -hmm. 
I understand that you uh, used that space during the time in which there were no cheerleading competitions or practice. Mm -hmm. What inspired you? You know, tell me what that looked like to go from here to actually having a business. Absolutely. So um, just a quick backstory on Kai. He was born with this hydrocephalus, uh, which is water on the brain. We later found out that he had some brain abnormalities. Um, because of the abnormalities, his optic nerves didn't form. So he's legally blind. And then he started developing seizures, which is common with brain abnormalities. So long story short, when he got to about a year old, we obviously knew he was significantly delayed and was going to continue to be. And we pretty much were just told for the foreseeable future, we won't know anything until Kai shows us what he can do. So of course, I have a one-year-old who's not acting like any other one-year-old, um, not walking, not talking, um, barely sitting up on his own. And I would try to take him to play dates, uh, play cafes, mommy land up in Polaris. I live here in Westerville and you know what anybody else would try to do to find things to do with their one-year-old child. And I just, every time I would go somewhere, I would just think, okay, I'm spending X amount of dollars, but my kid's just sitting on the floor and there's not really much for him to do. And I wasn't really creating conversations with people. So it just kind of got my wheels turning. Then we had gone with a friend to a place in Westerville called We Rock the Spectrum, which is another indoor play space, obviously by the name geared towards kids um, on the autism spectrum, but not limited to. Um, and I really liked the space. Um, my mom and I got to talking and we we're like, well, I wonder if like they are a franchise, which they were. We started looking into it. Um, but then we were like, well, you know, we own this building already. We have the space. Why don't we try to make our own um, and make it similar to the, the concept of We Rock the Spectrum? But we really didn't want to limit it to that. Um, and that's why we started talking about, you know, what would it look like? Who would it service? And I said, I wanted it to service everybody, all children, um, not just kids on the spectrum, not just developmentally delayed or atypical or medically complex kiddos and just typical kiddos. I want everyone there of all abilities so that it's a place that there is something for everybody to do and everybody feels welcome. And then also creates this sense of community and a safe space that we can have those conversations that we were talking about previously where we felt a little uncomfortable and we didn't know what to say but we wanted to make it the new norm so that if somebody wanted to ask about somebody's child it could be an open conversation and they felt comfortable having it and then it made it just okay to talk about like sexuality um, that's been the absolutely. New, the new norm <laughs> yes exactly right. yes and if you make it if you make it the new norm then what's it matter you know yeah. Um, yeah. That takes that takes intention, and it also takes yeah. some of the critical mass. And since a minority of our population has a typically developing people, I love mm -hmm. what you're creating in that it's um, attracting people to be a part of this movement. Yes, and you're creating a branching out effect whereby it's no big deal to them. They know. Yeah. They know kids and people that. Um, you know, or have their own developmental delays, and then they tell mm -hmm. people, and then they tell people, and it becomes more commonplace. And I think that's what's key yeah. about hitting the critical mass, that it just becomes yeah. more common. Absolutely. It's funny because we we kind of joked a friend of mine that comes into the gym a lot. We say that, like, there's people coming out of the woodworks. Mm -hmm. It's almost like you were just hiding back and staying at home before. You didn't know what people were going to think of you and your child, and you just – it, you were just scared and then now it's like oh we have this person come here and they say oh i read on facebook and my child has epilepsy too and then they just come and they start talking about it and i i just love seeing the these people come out and share their stories and feel comfortable enough and safe enough to do so so at what capacity are you at i don't want to drive thousands of people to you if you can't fit them god <laughs> willing this broadcast goes to thousands of people yes please <laughs> um, what is your capacity and do you have room for more? You know, tell me about where the business is at. 
Yeah, so um, the way that it's kind of set up right now, we have a very large warehouse building. Um, it was once a family dollar, and then before that it was batting cages. Um, so it's a huge building. Our capacity is like, we can be up to over 200 people um, at one time. Obviously, restrictions of COVID now, we don't really know what that's going to look like. We are working on a, a plan for whenever we are allowed to get back in. We know we still have not been announced yet. We're like the recreation piece at, that um, Governor DeWine hasn't really, really said anything about us yet. But um, we can we can house a pretty large amount of people. The way that it functions is we have the entire building to ourselves um during the week 9 a.m to 3 p.m so even though we can you know keep 200 people um people come and go anytime during that opening so you just pay to play and you can truly stay from nine to three if you want you can come for an hour yeah. um so and then we have saturday mornings that were open and then usually saturday afternoons and evenings were closed because we offer birthday parties Got it. Um, okay. so you're doing events and birthday parties. And yeah. when I think of the play gym, the ones I've been to are, you know, it's a madhouse. A bunch of kids running around on soft pads yeah. doing mm -hmm. monkey bars and yeah. soft items to jump on. And, yes. um, you know, what else are you doing? Balance beams. Mm -hmm. like so the, kind, the cool thing is, is the front space of our building was just one gigantic lobby at one point. We actually did construction on the building and had a guy um, named Steve Walker. He's a Bexley resident. Um, he has a, a company called Bespoke Woodworks. Mm -hmm. I found him on Facebook. He does custom, usually outdoor play structures. We were the first indoor one that he's ever done and the largest. Um, we wanted to bring the outdoors indoors. So he built this huge indoor play structure. It obviously has rubber floor, but we have slides and swings and... Um, bridges and tunnels magnet boards you name it we've got a lot we've got a sensory wall in that room a calming room um a lot that's in that small space then we have the back gym where the cheerleaders practice in the evenings and on sundays and during the our open hours we've got ride on toys roller coasters trampoline bounce house you name it we've got it <laughs> that's awesome since, yeah. since you've had the gym open, mm -hmm. uh, has Kai uh, developed a relationship with some kids where they know each other by name and kind of there's some connection there? Oh, absolutely. We have like our, we call them our regulars, mm -hmm. <laughs> my, my mom friend group that we've connected a lot. Um, but we definitely have like our, our Wednesday regulars is usually like a crowd that comes in. Mm -hmm. They all know Kai by name. Um, a lot of the times when I'm working, he's in there with me since. Other than that, um, if uh, either my mom's working or my cousin works for us as well. Um, but if I'm in there, usually Kai's in there with me. And so even people who've only come a couple times either have heard his story on our social media accounts or met him before. Mm -hmm. um, so they most everybody knows who Kai is, which okay. is what I want. <laughs> so um, let's talk a little bit about where do they find you? Where are you located? We are in Pataskala, so if you don't know where that is, or, or Pataskala, as some people say. <laughs> um, on the east side of Columbus, we're just a little further east from Reynoldsburg at the corner of 16, Route 16 and York Road. Okay, and online, do you have pricing and information about the play structure and some photos so that people can like get a sense of what are, what are they, what's the business about? Absolutely. So we are on Instagram just at Better Together Playnasium, and I'm happy to share this stuff after as well. Um, and then we also have a website. It's just better play better together .com. Better It has our pricing. Playnasium.com. Okay. Yep. Has our pricing, our hours, lots of pictures. Um it has information about birthday parties and events and rentals and that kind of stuff. Um, obviously, right now it's all paused, but we will get back to it as soon as we can. <laughs> great, great. Anything else yeah. you want to share um, about your business or something that maybe you can guarantee guests will receive when they come? Well, what I can guarantee is that you're going to see a friendly face, whether it is me, my mom, or my cousin. We 
really strive to have that that family feel like we want you to come in and just automatically know that we care about who you are and even if it's just because you're coming in because you want your one-year-old to scream their head off and run their energy off for an hour you're more than welcome to do it um but we also want them to know that you are going to come in and there will never be a sense of judgment um everybody is welcome and we just want you to feel safe in who you are and accepted in who you are when you're in our play space and that it's just more beyond your kids playing <laughs> yeah well it is um i think accepting who you are transcends well beyond uh developmentally challenged folks i mean just like you and i mm -hmm. said before we went live um mm -hmm. took a deep breath we've had busy days i said to you in kind of playing around i want to look good i don't want to yeah. look good. i <laughs> You know, I want to be accepted. I, Absolutely. You know, every adult has uh, the same basic needs, hopes, and desires mm -hmm. that you're talking about when referring to the gym and special needs. And mm -hmm. it transcends to every human being. Yeah. Absolutely. It, I feel like it's just like intrinsically built in us. You know, we just all want to be wanted and we all want to be accepted and then we sometimes can't help what we do or say because of that. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah had a coach, I had a coach once say to me, um, you know, somewhere in the realm of this conversation that we all have the same basic needs, wants, and desires. And he said, sorry, kid, you're not special. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Kai, you're not special. Not special. Yeah. Which is funny that you say that because uh when we were talking the other day about like the term special needs and things like that, I got to thinking about it. And I'm like, you know, I don't, I'm not bothered by the term special needs, but then I'm thinking like, well, really truthfully, like, aren't we all special needs? Because every single one of us have a need that is special and specific to us. Right. So I would think then, then really in turn, it would just make us all special. <laughs> yeah. If no one person is alike, then yeah. that's the way I look at it. Yeah, you know, it's 100% accurate. People don't want to be vulnerable and talk mm -hmm. about their special needs. Yeah. Uh, it's also easier to um, assign the words and description of special needs when you visually can see something um, that may require special attention versus exactly. yeah. adults much of us as we get older, we conceal our special needs. Yep, and, absolutely. And so um, I would agree with you. I mean, just like we talked about, you kidding me? I don't want to look badly, so I conceal all of my special needs. Exactly, right? Yeah. We're just going to tuck it down here, not let anybody see it. Absolutely. One of my, yeah. one of my special needs is that I look good in a t-shirt, and I'm not there yet. So I'm wearing a hoodie because I'm getting love handles from the yeah. Just gonna cover that right up, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think everybody is gonna need that in quarantine, right? Man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, hey, listen, um, Amber, I really appreciate the chance to connect with you. I so love your enthusiasm. Thank you. Who do we have here? The man, the myth, the legend. Yes, just waking up from his nap. Can you say hi? Hi, Bubba. How yes. you doing, buddy? Hi, you clap, clap. Can you clap, clap for everybody? Clap, clap. Yay. Yay. Hi. <laughs> he wanted a he wanted a cameo. Kai, <laughs> Kai, I love your Marvel shirt, buddy. Oh, all about it, right? That's Daddy's favorite, so he's always rocking Marvel. <laughs> Let's thank uh, a big. Big shout out to uh, Danny for troubleshooting us at the beginning. Yeah. Of yeah. I sensed you were about to eat a hat. You were so frustrated. I was just kind of like, I'm not sure what to do from here. So yeah. it's all good. It all worked out. Well, Amber Pearson yeah. will post uh, the information about your uh, business below. I encourage everyone out there. You don't need a child that may have atypically developmental needs. This is a place mm -hmm. of community. It's a place of learning, and from what it sounds like, it's really an opportunity for families to just connect in a deep way and allow themselves to be with all of their special needs. And I assure you, each one of you out there, we all have special needs. So with that, 
I am Mark Elias from New Albany Realty, sending you love, and thank you for joining us today. Thanks so much, guys.